my DM tips for using D&D Beyond, uh, I want to take a look at my content. So if you see in the top left part of the screen here, you have a nice little section called My Content. Uh, it could be your characters, your campaigns, your homebrew collection, your homebrew, your homebrew creations. Um, so I just want to take a look at here and show you some parts of this web website here. So if you look at My Characters, um, I have you know an un, 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 unlimited number of slots for characters. Uh, based on what I've purchased and such. Uh, and you can just go through, and any characters that you've made, you can search here. Most of these characters are characters that uh, I've created for, for other people, uh, like for them, and then put them into my camp campaigns. Um, so uh, that's what a lot of these characters are. I actually don't, I only have one active character here. Um, I don't even see him. No, I don't. I have no active characters. I apparently am not actually playing any games, uh, and really I'm not. I'm I am DMing a lot. So here's where you can uh, look at your characters. You can delete characters. You can edit them. You can view them, copy them. Uh, you can leave the campaigns that they happen to be. And I'm going to go over campaigns in a moment here. Any of that stuff. Uh, for instance, down here, here's a couple of the characters from uh, Rollout. Uh, first season of Rollout, I made the characters for the WWE superstars, um, and this is their characters here. So even though they were characters that I made, I didn't actually get a chance to play them. I was the dungeon master for that for that, for that that game. So uh, if you see here, this is where your characters are. And you can also create a character from, from, from here. If you had tons of characters where you're having a hard time you know, organizing them, you could also you know, search races for, I know Turok is a half-orc, which I think has a hyphen, so we're going to go half-orc. And you can search, and there you go, half work. So if you get too too many characters, you can always uh, figure it out. You can also see here that this tells you how many slots have you you've used. So I have 20 characters made, um, so so far. Um, back up here, you can go to campaigns. So this is one as a DM. Um, I see I have a few different cam campaigns going on. Um, uh, here's a here's a campaign for rollout. Uh, here's River Break, which is a campaign which I'm playing at home. Uh, it's my home home game, a, a city that I've created myself uh, with my wife's help. And uh, I'm running a game in that. That's my Wednesday night game with my local friends. Um, and then I'll show you this one here. This is a my wife's name is Julie, and uh, she has a group of work people who are very new players. Uh, they've only had a few sessions. And uh, here's their character. So they're up to level three, having never played Dini before ever, any of them, um, except for my wife. And this is her character, Kiasa. And here's all their characters down here. Um, the good thing about this is you can send this link to players. And this is the campaign link. Um, and you send the link to them, they follow it. When they come here, they can create a character and they get to use whatever content you have. So as the DM, um, I have all the content D&D Beyond has right now, so my players can have access to that without having to pay a bunch of money them uh, themselves. And by putting their characters here, I can see their characters. So I can look at their characters if I, you know, had a question of, you know, oh, what if, you know, what does what does Flom's character look like? I don't remember from when we were playing. I can look at Flom, um, and here's his character, and maybe. He has some notes, uh, you know, which he does. Horatio the Rat. Flom is a druid, um, a hill dwarf druid, as we see up here. Um, and he made friends with a, with a rat, which in my game I came up with this rat who was previously a familiar for a wizard. Uh, and he was an actual living familiar, not the fine familiar spell, but like a living familiar. And he could speak, and he was hanging out in the in the sewers, and the druid be the friend of this rat called Horatio. So he put him underneath allies. And maybe as I'm writing a story, I forget, oh, what was the name of that rat f that Flom was, was friends with because I want him to show up again or, you know, something. Uh, here, here you go. It's right, right here on this character sheet. Um, I can go back up here to campaign um, and click back on it. And here's my campaign again. And again, you can you know, edit characters if you want, if you're the DM. You can also create unassigned characters and then give people the link and they can go to it and they can grab that character and claim it for themselves. So that's how you do that. You can also create a new camp campaign uh, if you come here. And again, whatever you want, you know, this can be, you know, Greyhawk. 
2.0 <clears throat> and that's what your campaign is let's go back <coughs> cancel that cancel go back um, you can also go up here and create a campaign of your own and maybe I'm going to call this Greyhawk 2.0 because maybe I had a 1.0 Greyhawk campaign at some point in my, my my life and I want to create a new one. And you can, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can tell, you put whatever you want on here as the description. Um, and then you create the campaign. And now here you go. I have Greyhawk 2.0. I can view the campaign. And as you can see, there's nobody here. But you can put notes down here. You can paint public notes and private notes um, and that sort of thing. And then you can create unassigned characters. And again, you can send the link to people and then they can come here and they can also uh, add characters and use your content as the DM. Um, as a campaign, I'm going to go I'm gonna delete that because I'm not making a Greyhawk 2.0 campaign. We'll get rid of that. Another part of the my content that I really like is my homebrew creations. Homebrew collection I don't use. Um, I don't usually go out and use other people's home homebrew stuff. Maybe I should more often because it would save me some time, uh, but I tend not to. So let's just go to homebrew creations. If you look here, this is all the homebrew creations that I've that I've made. So these are all. Uh, if you saw my previous video, here's my chainmail of sacrifice that I made. Um, you know, here are some races and some monsters that I've put in. Um, magic items, spells like the ice ball that I made before. Uh, you know, another magic item, a magician staff that I made. Um, and various things like like that. So these are all the things that I've made. Uh, this is something that I suggest for you. So if you see these goblins here in the beginning, and they have an at symbol in front of them, these happen to be the goblins that I used in the rollout cam campaign. Uh, if you go to uh, on here on YouTube, you can look at the link on this on this video and on my page. But the the up up down down channel, um, I was the DM for rollout, which was a game that I ran, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game, with WWE Superstars. They were third third level, uh, and I took Lost Minds of Fandover, and I went through, and I upped some of the monsters. So in a, I got these monsters here, the Forest Goblin, the Hill Goblin Alchemist, the Hill Goblin Champion, the Hill Goblin Warrior, from a book by Nord Games, uh, which I'll put that down in the down like below how to find it what the name of it is but these are um, updated goblins so they're not in D&D Beyond because they're not made by Wizards of the Coast um, so I took them out of the book for Nord Games and I put them into D&D Beyond for myself so I had the stats easily accessible and I put at symbols after them because what I wanted to do was I wanted to filter by at so when I was running the rollout game and sitting with my tablet at the table to have my stats, I wanted to just be able to click on at, filter, and now all the rest of the stuff is gone, and here's my stuff. So now I can go through and I can run a encounter or a game and have all my stats on one page for my creature. Um, obviously, I probably will not keep them forever with the at symbol in front of them because, you know, that's... They're not an at Forest Goblin, they're a Forest Goblin. Uh, but that's how I did it, just for organizational purposes for myself and just to make my life easier uh, and not to have to sort, search through all that list. Um, obviously, I could have just done Goblin and got a similar list. But what if I had other Goblins that I weren't wasn't using in that game um, that I had like, created? Then they would show up as well. So I just did the at symbol just to kind of organize things a little a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> back up to my content, homebrew creations, um, and you can see, again, you can see, uh, you can sort by type, you can sort by date modified, maybe I want the newest thing that I created, um, or the oldest thing that I created, um, any of those, those things there. <coughs> Filter that out, let's scratch that out, let's not do the sort thing. Go back here. So back to my homebrew creations. Uh, as you see, here's your list again, uh, and I can sort by any of these things up here. Sort by name. I think it defaults to sorted by name. No, it doesn't sort by name. I have a sorted by date modified. That's that's why. Back up. Scratch that. So as you can see, we go back to homebrew creations. 
Uh, by default, it looks like it sorts by a name. So uh, you can see here it looks sort by name. Everything's alphabetical by by name, which is why the at symbols are up at the top. Um, so you can also you know click on these other topics to sort by date modified or views or type. Um, you can always click the plus symbol to to expand it, as I showed you just a few a minute a few minutes ago. And that's it for uh, the home for as far as your list of home brew creations. So for for me, this is the part that I use a lot. I use the my content area a lot. I'm going into my homebrew creations, I'm looking things up, um, I'm adding things and making new things for my campaigns all the, all the time, um, and I find it to be a very powerful and useful tool. So go on out there and make some stuff, guys.